The 20th of January marks the 134th anniversary of the beginning of the construction of one of the world's greatest engineering feats, but one that has a dark history, socially, politically and economically. The first attempt to construct a canal through what was then the Colombian province of Panama began on 20th of January 1881 by the French. But the cost and difficulty of construction in the rain-soaked tropics through unstable mountains exceeded expectations and the French effort eventually went bankrupt after losing an estimated 22,000 lives to accident and disease and spending in excess of $287 million. After this, the US President Theodore Roosevelt and the Senate of the United States were interested in establishing a canal across the isthmus. In June 1902, the US Senate voted in favor of pursuing the Panamanian option, providing the necessary rights could be obtained. However, Colombia, who owned Panama, were not happy with the negotiations. Therefore, Roosevelt and the Panamanian business interests collaborated on a revolution. The battle for Panama lasted only a few hours. Colombian soldiers in Colón were bribed $50 each day to lay down their arms, and the USSS Nashville cruised off the Panamanian coast in a show of support. On November 3, 1903, the nation of Panama was born thanks to the help of the United States and big business. Historian George Tyndall labelled it one of the greatest blunders in American foreign policy, and it is often cited as a classic example of US gunboat diplomacy in Latin America. The US assumed parental interest in Panama and only handed the canal back to Panama in 1999. The canal took a decade to complete. It was officially opened on August 15, 1914, and it provided a key maritime shortcut to avoid the lengthy and dangerous route around the bottom of South America. It has also allowed greater integration of the world economy, but this came at the cost of the sovereignty of the Colombian, Panamanian people and the lives of tens of thousands of workers.